So I often hear people say that they have low porosity hair and that that means that they don't need protein in their products or they're protein sensitive. That's not necessarily true. If you want to know what is true, keep watching. Hey family, so Mina from the future here to quickly say like a while ago I filmed this video on the difference between protein sensitivity and low porosity hair and the relation between it. I didn't really feel confident in how I explained it but I think it was last week someone asked me if I still wanted to upload that video so here I am now if you didn't know I am doing vlogmas kind of but in my way so I will be uploading two times a week two times a week I will be uploading two times a week and it's just gonna be the regular scheduling that I want to keep up with but there's gonna be vlogs there's gonna be Christmas decor and I'm gonna upload some of the questions that you guys had and the most of it is gonna be in vlog form but it's also gonna be sit down videos like this so if you like that if you're excited that we're doing some sort of vlog mess this year let me know I will not be doing the joys of Christmas like I normally do on my channel because this year girl I'm just trying to not do too much trying to enjoy my life around Christmas period and still trying to be consistent so I wanted to update you before we go into that video so let's do this now I hope it helps somebody out there okay bye hey from me welcome back to my channel and today we're going to talk about low porosity and protein sensitivity and how that is not necessarily the same thing so what I notice when I hear people talk about um, protein sensitivity, protein overload and porosity, I hear them talking about it as if it's the same thing. And I wanted to clarify it because I also noticed that a few years ago while I was learning about porosity and protein overload myself that I did mix the two. I didn't completely know how to distinguish the two so I wanted to make a video because I think it might be helpful so here we go I want to break down what all of these things mean so if you stick with me for a little bit we'll get to the answer okay now a hair strand is made up out of a protein layer so you can imagine that when your hair comes out of your scalp that protein layer is untouched it's completely intact that's amazing. But as your hair strand gets older, your protein layer and your hair strand itself gets uh, damaged. So there's gaps in your protein layer. So the protein layer is there to make our hair stronger, to keep it from breaking. When our hair gets gaps in the protein layer, our hair weakens. So what we can do is we can use protein in our products to temporarily patch up the gaps in the protein layer. So that's why we have protein in our hair products. What happens when you don't have gaps in your, um, in your hair strand or all the uh, gaps in your hair strand are patched but you're still using protein when you're using too much protein the protein is still gonna still gonna form a layer on top of your hair that's when you have protein overload so you might notice that your hair feels like rope it's dry even when your hair is wet it feels brittle those are all signs that you have protein overload because your hair has more protein than it needed in the natural hair community we have discovered protein overload and some of us have decided no I'm never using protein again in 2018 that was me that's not always the best way to go it's crucial to figure out what is my personal protein moisture balance and that's different for everybody now there are some people who need a very little amount a very little amount of protein in their products and that's just either because their hair doesn't have a lot of gaps in the hair strand in the protein layer or they get a lot of protein out of their diet so they don't need it in hair products anymore those people who don't need a lot of protein in their hair products have labeled themselves as protein sensitive i myself 
just to kind of make sure that people understand what I'm talking about. Also say that my hair is slightly protein sensitive. If I've gone a long time without protein, then I can use a lot of pro uh, products with protein, maybe one wash day, and then the next wash day, I do a protein free wash day. So that's me, that's my balance. So now that you know what protein sensitivity is and protein overload, where does low porosity come in? So low porosity hair is hair that has cuticles that are tightly closed. Let's just call it closed to make it easier under, to understand. L uh, low porosity hair can also be very healthy, undamaged hair. And the reason why the two get mixed up together, low porosity hair can be very healthy hair that does not have a lot of patches in the protein layer which would mean that you don't need a lot of protein to uh, patch up those gaps because there are not a lot of gaps in the first place this is the reason why they relate but they're not the same because porosity is a spectrum you can have low porosity hair that is damaged if you have damage and you have gaps in that hair strand you need protein to patch it up and you might actually need more protein than someone would if they are protein sensitive do you get why i'm saying that low porosity and protein sensitivity are not the same this for now is the easiest way i can explain i'm hoping it's clear but i want to know what you think so if you have questions about this please let me know down below in the comments and I will do my best to answer every question. I hope that this explains why there is a relation between low porosity hair and protein sensitivity, but why they are not the same. Usually when someone is low porosity and their hair is healthy, they do not need a lot of protein, but that's not always the case. So, I hope that this helped. If it did, give it a thumbs up. If you're new, please subscribe to become part of the family where you can learn a lot more about your hair. But we have plus size fashion videos as well. We have vlogs. We have a little bit of everything. We have fun. <laughs> so, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a video over here and I will see you in the next one, okay? Have a wonderful day, you wonderful human being. Bye.